Hi, my name is Joe Bonamassa. I'm currently in Nazareth, Pennsylvania at the OG Martin factory. And this is the new Joe Bonamassa 1941 0045. The original 1941 0045 started out in this room and was shipped to Southern California, where it stayed there for, I don't know, until it came back here for inspection almost 83 years. Legend has it this lady walked into a guitar center in Costa Mesa, California. It was her husband's guitar, and her husband inherited from his father and his father, so it was, goes back three generations. And was sold for $225, which in 1941 was a huge sum of money. It was a huge investment in music and a guitar. Um, yes, it was one of the flagships that this company made. The lady thought it was a Gibson, even though it said Martin, CF Martin on it. And she got enough money from me through Guitar Center um, to save her house and it was the last thing of value that she had. And uh, so it saved her house, and I got a wonderful guitar and a hell of a story. In any old guitar deal, everybody has to win, especially when you're dealing with the families. Um, and I do this all the time, and it's deeply, deeply personal. A lot of time that that item is the last indelible link to their you know, loved ones that are not there, not with us anymore. And it's one of the few instruments in my collection that I'm actually almost scared to play because it's so preserved. When I tell you that the condition of that guitar and the condition of this brand new guitar is almost identical. It is the cleanest Martin of that era I've ever seen in my life. And uh, when we started talking about a signature model based on this 0045, it's like you don't really have to do much. I mean, I know we're in an era of aged guitars, but there's no sense of aging a guitar that, to make it look more beat up than the, than the original guitar is. So when we did this, it basically looks just like this. When it came back to Nazareth to be inspected last year, I was worried that it had not left Southern California in 83 years. So we picked time, a time in the year, October, where the humidity and the climate here is the same as it would be in Southern California. And I didn't want any radical temperature changes because again, it's been so preserved for so long. And I got this guitar that we're, I'm sitting with, the Joe Bonamassa limited edition 0045, which is based on the 1941 model that currently resides in Los Angeles, California at my house. I don't collect guitars, I collect stories. I don't collect instruments because I want to deal on them. I want to collect instruments because I want to help a family you know, out of financial trouble, and they have this one, you know, item that, that could be sold for lots of money. They want to know it, the peace of mind of it going to a good home, and the financial benefits is always, it's, it's a win-win. It's a and to think about how many Martin guitars there are in the world, from the 1850s to the golden era, and, and, and through about 1964, and you just go, wow, they were really efficient, and, you know, the, the initial guitars left this building, on, on, you know, in, in coffin cases being pulled by horse and buggy. It astounds me that everything up until, I believe, 1964 was built here. It's amazing the, the, the legacy of this company to this day and, and still building beautiful, well-crafted instruments, this one being number 10. You told a kid in upstate New York that one day I'd be here in this room looking at something with my name on it. Insane. The prototype was amazing. Um, the, the process in which my original guitar was scanned was so rigorous, it took two days. I didn't know that the inlays on the 45 series back in that era, they could differ and, and so each guitar was unique. You know, I learned a lot about my instrument, you know, um, and I learned a lot about the process of building high-end acoustic guitars because, 
it, it really is a, a, it's so much handcrafted human work that goes into it. It's not a machine stamping it out. That's why they're all slightly different. But this neck profile is very similar, if not identical, to the one that, that sits in the Laurel Canyon. Again, they're made by human beings. And they were made by human beings 83 years ago, and they're made by human beings today. So the initial impression was great. The look is identical. The feel is almost identical. I think these sound better. Because the original one has not opened up. It's so preserved and mint that it has not opened up. So it's a, it's a little it's a little tame sounding. I, am I going to take a guitar pick and go? I'm not doing that. You know. Again, they're only mint one time, ladies and gentlemen. This I'll play. You know. But um, no, it's the sound is really good. And I've always been fond of the triple O size, and I've always been fond of the obviously the the, the 45 appointments. Well, it's really important to me that, that the new guitar uh, stayed true to the old one uh, because there's no other reason to do it. You know, we're basing it on a particular, a specific instrument um, and not just a 45. You know, so it gives people an opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, feel what it's like to hold a golden era, triple O 45. I mean, they're very expensive and they're extremely rare. And not many people get an audience with them in the same room. So that's like a good thing that you know, we get to do this and people can play an instrument that is built here in Nazareth and to the same spec as it was 83 years ago. So we kept it, I, you know, I'm like my involvement was, I said, this is what we, we need to do. Um, let's try to keep the price point within reason. Obviously we can't do Brazilian rosewood, but we picked the right rosewood, I think, which looks great. Um, looks like Brazilian, but it's not. And, you know, when I got the prototype, I didn't really have any notes. So, you know, again, because it's, my original guitar sat here for two days while a team of experts went over it forensically and, and uh, did a great job. They know the process. I mean, you guys have done this for almost 200 years. It's, you know, you built a few of these before. The most rewarding process is, is to go from a phone call and a Zoom call, I think it was, to seeing it in, you know, 3D and being here in this room. And I think that's, you know, for a guitar geek, this is top of the heap ladies and gentlemen. And it's really an honor of a lifetime. I can't stress this enough. I mean, like how honored I am to have my name on a, on a Martin guitar. It's like, it's surreal. Signing those COAs yesterday, I was like, man, pretty cool. This is what I get to do. It, you'd be shocked to see how, in some guitar companies, have very little knowledge or records of what they did in the past. I think what separates Martin from the other um, uh, guitar manufacturers is, is their history. And their, and their knowledge of their own history. It's kind of an odd business. And the more knowledge you have about your, your past, the more you can look to the future and say, well, look, we, can, we can build guitars just as good as we, as we did in the golden era, you know, which is that confluence of, of, of great woods and craftsmen and artisans and design. And you know, that's, that's the really cool thing about Martin that separates itself from, from the other manufacturers is the fact it's like, you know, we're 200 years into this thing, give or take. To me, the, the beauty of a triple O 45 is the size. You know, it's got enough projection where it's loud, but it's not, it's not overly boomy. And, you know, it's good for stuff without a pick. You know, it's good for blues. play a lot of different things on it you know um, it's obviously good for songwriting it's good for strumming along it sits well in the track um, and yeah, you can play everything but death metal on this thing so but I guess if, I guess if you put a pickup in it and turned up the gain enough you you know play play whatever you want and I guess one thing about you know acoustic guitars is you know mostly at Martin's deeply associated with bluegrass, you know, flat picking, you know, but it's, to me, they're just as cool with the blues, you know.
So you can play anything you want. You know, I think one of the legacies um, of, of any of these signature kind of adventures that, that either I do or anybody does, it, it's deeply personal to the artist. It's like, it's like, you know, I'm not redesigning a Martin guitar. I'm just, I'm just sharing 45 times over a glimpse into a guitar that I own and, it's, and, and that most people will never get to play you know, or see. It's one of those things where I hope that it inspires people to play, you know, because, you know, sound makes you play, guitars make you play, and there's certain guitars that you own that, that you never reach for. I hope that this becomes one of those guitars where you put it on a stand, you know, in, in, your, in your music room, and you, and you consistently reach for it and want to just go, you know, oh, this is cool. Let's check it out and write some songs or jam along with a record or just, you know, put it slightly out of tune and annoy your family. That's always fun too. No, I think one, one piece of advice that I would I would uh, I would I, I would offer is, is enjoy it. That's what they're built for. Enjoy it and play it. Don't worry if you get a nick on it. It's it's, it's you know a lot of people are really worried about like one scratch is worth. It's don't no. Just just play it and enjoy the enjoy the thing. That's what they're that's what we did this whole project for so they can be enjoyed. <laughs>